gets themselves to sleep. Luna, the next morning, you awake very early, as you do every morning, to go about your training. It begins, as always, just as the first light touches the sky and chases away the stars. It's cold still in the morning here in the canyon, and your breath can be seen as you step away from the camp a little way and begin your forms as you've done hundreds, if not thousands of times before. The pebbles underfoot rasp against one another as you trace the basic forms of your early monk training in the dance-like circles that you had learned so long ago. You move from your basic forms to more advanced techniques, now combining your water shaping and quarter staff and unarmed attacks and fluid and deadly combinations flowing from one to another in a never ending progression of movement and speed and power. As normal, this goes on for an hour or so. And as you take a moment, as your training comes to a close, you look down and see a small trickle of water at your feet. You're sure it wasn't there before, but now here it is. A part of you almost questions if you subconsciously let some of the water from your skins that you were training with fall to the ground. But then you notice that it flows away from you and the camp towards the sylvan stone wall that towers 200 feet into the sky to your left. Do you follow it? As you follow this trickle and approach the wall, you can make out that the wall is not as smooth as you had perceived it to be from the camp. There's what looks like almost a fold in the rock, the seam edge camouflaging it perfectly from view. And there in that fold, in that small crevice, the water pools, making a perfectly still, almost glass-like surface. It's not a large area, only about two to three feet wide, but it's almost like a mirror as you look down into it, reflecting the sylvan stone and the brightening sky up behind you. You examine it. You see it goes back into the stone further than you thought. And as your eyes adjust, you see there is a light reflected there, rippling on the stone walls, green and gold, sparkling in the crystals of the sylvan stone. It's almost calling to you, pulling you forward. Would you like to step in the pool? You step in and your bare feet tingle at the touch of the cool, soothing water. And even as you step into the inky darkness with only the slight rippling glimmer of light to guide you, a comforting peace that reminds you of growing up in the forests where you were trained just flows over you. You go deeper into the crevice, first one step, then two, and you realize this isn't just crevice it's a pathway ahead of you you see that it curves deeper into the depths of the stone and as you follow the rippling light and turn the corner the passageway opens up daylight penetrates the darkness in shafts of golden light you carefully tread towards this spot and you can see that the water clearly now flows freely over the gentle cascades, making a stairway of sorts. And up ahead, you can see a grotto filled with golden light. You carefully tread towards the grotto, up this flowing cascade of stairs. And when you arrive, 
you see the most beautiful place above water that you have ever seen. The air is warm here. Trickles of water flow down rock faces that tower around you to an emerald canopy gently swaying with leaves overhead. Tiny, shimmering flowers, almost metallic looking, cascade down the walls around you and flowering vines of colorful berries hang and sway languidly throughout this space, almost like kelp in the oceans back home, moving with the tide. To your right in this space, you look and you see a beautiful 12 foot high waterfall. Its flow is crystal and smooth and it's almost like liquid glass. And within that shimmering water, you can make out just barely a figure of an older gray haired woman in long robes whose vibrant colors have long since faded down to just a memory on the fabric as it flows down around her. You can see her eyes look to you, Luna. She sees you. And her kind eyes blink and she makes a nod of welcome to you into this place. And then from that sheet of water flowing over the rocks, you see two watery hands reach out from the cascade and inviting you to take them. Luna, do you wish to approach and how do you go forward? Um, Luna just, again, just proceeds very slowly forward. Like she's definitely going forward and like and reaching out. Right? It's like if the hand is this way, she's reaching out that way. Mm -hmm. Or a bit. Just walking slowly there. Kind of sort of almost in a trance like she's like she's just overwhelmed by everything she's seen. Okay. As you approach these vines that were swaying like kelp, they almost seem to part, making a pathway for you as you move forward. There are concentric sort of terraced waterfalls that create sort of a wide monumental staircase. It goes up to the pool at the base of the waterfall. And as you ascend, the golden light that fills this place around you seems to all dim until it's just this bright beam focused on the hands emerging from the cascade and you standing before them. You reach out, and as you said, you take the hands. In your mind, is transported into a vision. A vision you're watching as an observer. And while there's no spoken voice in your head, you understand that it's a story being told. A story from long ago. And it begins to unfold before you. There's a long sigh as though someone's taking a deep breath and then you begin to understand Eldath wept the goddess sat in quiet contemplation in her isolated grotto water cascading all around her trying desperately to find for herself the peace that she had once bestowed upon this world for so many countless eons. Over the centuries, she and her people had abided much sacrifice in the name of peace. Time and again, giving of themselves only to have their hopes of a peaceful world crushed by the forces of malice, vanity, and greed. She could feel her time and power ebbing away as peace was becoming but a distant memory in this land. And now 
the realms and sacred groves of her people were being invaded by those same forces of unending corruption and war. Head in hand, she trembled with emotion as she realized what must come to pass. An anguished regret filled Eldath as her tears grew hard and cold, turning from pearls of liquid light into shards of cruel, cold metal. Her people summoned this last stronghold of peace, gathered the fallen shards of iridescent aqua, and forged the shattered soul of a goddess of peace into the weapons of war. With every tear fallen and every weapon forged, Eldath's form diminished from the material plane until all that remained was her reflection, a memory shimmering on the surface of this once sacred waterfall, a place that had been dedicated to the tenants of peace and a goddess that was now lost and forgotten. Your eyes open, Luna, the hands release yours, but on your hands now are two gauntlets, fingerless, but with immaculately carved pieces of warp woods on the back of the palms and the joints of the fingers up to the knuckles. And in the center, on the back of the palm, an iridescent aqua tear of shining metal. As you receive the last tears of Eldath. You'll find them in a moment in your handouts. So, Luna, how do you proceed? You are standing in the grotto. Is the reflection still there or has it? It's still there, faint. I do not know why you have chosen me for this, but I will do my best to preserve your memory in this world, not for war, but for peace. She nods, and you see the golden light fills the space again, and the hands retract back into the waterfall and you see the shimmering form as though it had taken all of its strength, her strength to be there for you. But that moment fades to almost just a silhouette of glittering light within the falls. And Luna is just going to like reach her hand out one more time as this water solid go there like she's putting her hand flat against it. Mm -hmm. Nod and then bring it back in. And then so like holding her since the gaunt, gaunt, now gauntleted hands. Mm -hmm. um, probably say a small prayer. Yep. And then exit. Yeah, you can follow the pathway back out and you emerge back out onto the rocky beach just as the sun is coming up. And as you look behind you, there is no crevice, no fold in the rock. It is just 
smooth sylvan stone.